this is a question that I feel like I'm often asked and I don't have a great answer myself, but maybe you have a better okay. one than me. Um, that, was there a moment where you thought, this is what I want to do when I'm older or a particular person that you work with that inspired you and wanted to be an actor as an adult instead of a kid? I too wish I had a more <laughs> profound, like aha moment to talk about when I get asked this question, but Truly my sort of um, beginning was so coincidental and just like very variables fell into place and then all of a sudden I was like kind of it was happening, you know? And the one thing that I knew that I loved from a very early age was playing pretend and using my imagination and I really couldn't be bothered to do anything else. And that's why my mom was like, okay, well maybe she wants to do this summer drama camp and like be in plays, or maybe she's wants to be an actress. I don't know, like she was trying to kind of hone, she was putting me, she would put me in all kinds of lessons, like gymnastics, ballet, like all, and I didn't want to do any of it. I just wanted to like be at home and make up a whole scenario. So I guess she thought maybe she wants to be an actress. So I couldn't, it wasn't that I communicated like, mom, I want to be a, I want to go to California and be an actress. But then that kind of opportunity arose and I did want to do that. And then the next opportunity would come and I wanted to continue. And so that's sort of how it happened. And now of course, 24, looking back, I literally can't imagine having any other life or doing anything else um, other than being an actor. It's become a part of who I feel I am. Um, but I wish I had a more, I wish I had like that moment that of like inspiration, you yeah. know, where like, I, cause it just was kind of this slow build, I guess, which, um, yeah, that's just my, that's, that's my answer to that. But when do you, when did you know? I guess I'm, there was never, I get, there wasn't that moment. I, you know, as, as you know, you sort of start out as a kid and it just felt like, not that I didn't take it professionally or throw myself into it and and take it seriously, but it didn't feel like a job. It wasn't this right. profession and my parents weren't, I guess it wasn't a hobby, but it wasn't something that my parents said, this is what you're gonna be forever. If anything, they were more encouraging of other things and mm -hmm. even the dream of like being a footballer or a soccer player, they were like, well, that's better than- My mom a tennis player. My, I come from a full like athletics family. So this was like the last thing on anyone's <laughs> radar for yeah. what they wanted me to be. And then it just sort of carried on and the projects continued. But I feel like I was probably lucky or I've always thought growing up in London and being somewhat removed from LA. And yeah. I guess it's more impressive that you've managed to stay so grounded. Whereas I had the return to what I thought of as normality by yeah. going back to school and continuing on with education. And I feel like it must have been trickier to be in an environment where, or an, where the industry seemed somehow closer or less right. hard to escape. Even though I feel like I did grow up in Los Angeles, I'm from Georgia originally and my family is is very um, traditional traditional and Southern. And so even though I grew up in LA, I grew up almost in Georgia too, yeah. like in my household, uh -huh. you know? And, um, and I mean, you've met my, the thing is we also should probably share that we've known each other for yeah, quite some time and have a friendship. Other. We haven't worked together. It but, feels like we somehow have. But yeah, it does. And um, you know, I've met your parents, you've met my mom mm. and, and um, I just credit even though I grew up in, in LA, my mom managed to give me a very kind of stable, grounded mm -hmm. life. And she went with me everywhere. She was always the same with, with my me. Dad. Your he dad went with you. And yeah. And I think that that's, um, she was always my constant and my provided stability for me. And, and, uh, and at the same time, she's completely not in the business and never wanted to be and she was just my mom always. So we were kind of learning together mm -hmm. too and like navigating it together. But I think that that's, I felt, I, even though I grew up in LA, I feel like I weirdly like grew up outside, yeah. you know, because of just um, the kind of like values that she has. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, yeah, so. Um, yeah, my mom, uh, as you know, my mom is an agent for actors back in the UK, but yeah. it probably seems you will hopefully understand this, but others may not. It, they always feel like I came from this industry family or right, it, it was something right. that I was always destined to do. Uh, whereas it didn't feel like that at all. It felt like, you know, having that grounded 
family stability and it was was such a world away from yeah from acting and from that that industry I, I guess yeah. neither of us got caught up in believing the the hype and the madness and yeah. seeing through that facade. No, my mom was always saying, like, we're just living in L.A. right now. It had been, like, four years, you know what I mean? Like, she was like, oh, we still kind of live in Georgia. I was like, well, we don't, you know? <laughs> she was she refused to accept that this was kind of something that was going to stay. But I have an interesting question. I wonder what your answer will be, because I get asked um, this question a lot, too, is um, one day in the future, when you have a child, would you let them start out so young if they I get asked to. this too um, and by people who are close to me and who I think like me and so you think well I mean I turned out hopefully yeah. okay so yeah. um, I don't know it's such a I guess I guess we have to say yes and I feel very lucky to have had all of those opportunities that mm -hmm. I had as a kid but I guess something that we both did also was go to university and I never felt like I decided to just be an actor or to yeah. define myself as an actor from well, a very early age. It was something that I was doing but then it was important to me to go off to, to university and study something and then have acting as an adult be an active choice yes. as opposed to feeling now at 26, oh I just fell you into this have, somehow. have like experiences to, to draw, draw from on. that yeah. are not completely pretend and on mm. set. You know that was, I went to a regular high school and mm. having that sort of traditional American high school experience was really important to me and I got to have that and also still work and so that was really nice. My answer to that question of if I had a kid would I let them start mm. out so young is, ye is yes because I have not one regret about my life and if and I know how I felt and if my child felt that way I wouldn't ever stop them from doing it. My one thing is I would want to be there with them all the yeah. time. So then would I would I be selfless enough to do that, you know? Like that that that's my one to question. Because I could never okay. send my kid off to a set and not have like no. a parent there. That is so like such a foreign concept to me. I like know? how we're talking now about the kids that we will have. The kids not, that we not will together, have, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one day, yeah. you and I on set together with yes, your with, kid, my kid. Separate kids being like, it was so great, we retired, we like left it to the kids to do. Um, although it feels like, uh, this is probably a side note, but people have often asked me about you, like, what was it like to date Dakota? <laughs> <laughs> because we had this one dinner where our parents were just literally like in the next door restaurant and we like sat down at like off. 14, yeah, and then discussed this film that we never ended up doing together yeah. and came out and everyone was like, oh, you're going out together, how lovely it was. And it was many years when, before, you know, people seemed to stop before asking me about how you that were. that rumor, and, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I feel like uh, well, I won't go into more details about it. I didn't encourage it, but it wasn't something. Yeah. Ever done that before? Uh, no, 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 no. You want to do it again? <laughs> yes, but. But what? <laughs> you know, it's it's funny. Your um, I don't have a lot of. I mean, of, of course, I have like other young actors that I've worked with that are friends, but you're one who I haven't worked with, mm -hmm. who we've kind of maintained this um, friendship yeah. over the years. It's been really nice, and getting to do this together has been like an opportunity to reconnect, and which having has been really nice. having across the pond who you can think, oh, great. Yes, like, yeah, uh, yeah. and I'll too. see your mom every once in a yeah. while too, and um, yeah, I really, uh, it has been nice, because I think that we think about our past careers and what we want for our future careers in a really similar way mm -hmm. and um that's what not to cut you off but that no. was what i was going to ask you yeah. about in terms of you directed the short film yeah. for the your, was that your that was the first, first thing time. that you directed mm -hmm. and i was lucky to direct on on bates motel and this season i'm going to do that again and it feels like there's a similar path for our futures in that way of a desire to do something more than acting Yes, I definitely feel that way because, and this is the thing that happens when we, and I'm sure you come up against this, like I'm 24, I'm very aware that that is still very young, yeah. but I have been acting since I was six. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it has, um, that, that's a 
great many years. And, yeah. and so I do also feel this yearning to do something else. But like I said earlier, my, my identity is being an actor. So I was like, how can I shift that to kind of, how can I grow from yeah. there? And so directing for me felt like the natural next step. Um, and I loved doing it so much and it challenged me in a way that I hadn't experienced in a while mm -hmm. because as much as you get challenged with different roles or um, different uh, films that you're in, we kind of know what it means to be an actor on set and like that, you know, I feel pushed to a certain extent but I also feel very comfortable and so directing like ripped me out of my comfort, comfort zone, zone and like threw me in the middle of a like desert with no water, you know, <laughs> it was like terrifying. Yeah. Um, and it was actually really cool to feel, to feel that. And um, yeah, I don't know if you felt the I, same way. Yeah, I guess I was, I was lucky to do it within a, it within, within a, that yeah, bubble where you'd true. been that's with true. people that you knew and you knew were supportive and, uh, and I guess it, it came out of a natural desire for me after being on Bates Motel for a few years to want to contribute beyond just that one season that I was a part of. It, or it, I guess to phrase it better, like it seemed weird to go away from putting so much in for four or five months and not have anything to do with that like process in between or desire to contribute, you know, in writing or in directing when the next season came. It, it's also like, I think, wanting to exert a little bit of control too. Not in a bad way, but just like as an actor, <laughs> as you- we plan to take over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as an actor, sometimes you can feel a little bit at the mercy of so many other people. And, and um, that was another thing for me and just thinking about like moving forward and like wanting to produce and like find my own material to make and maybe not even be in it or to yeah. direct and not be in, you know, and, 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 um, and expanding. I think it's my way of kind of feeling in control because as an actor, it's like you rely a lot of the time on other people to like believe in you yeah. somehow. And, and that can, again, we're so young, but we've been experiencing that for a great many years and that can be exhausting. And so i um, kind of excited at that. I was the one who found him. <laughs> At the last moment, he lost his courage and tried to pull the gun from his mouth. He was in terrible pain. I've gotten asked these same questions that I know people don't think are in any way offensive or <laughs> um, they think that they're the normal question that you would ask, but I know that you've definitely been asked them too, and I just wonder how you feel about them and their variation variations on like, how are you so normal? Like, do you regret yeah. not having a childhood? Like, have you, you missed know, out have on you anything? Missed out on everything? Where are your friends? How could you? Ha My question that I got asked when I was literally a child was, do you like? Do you have any friends? Like, how could you possibly like foster friendships being away all the time? And I'm like eight years old, like. <laughs> uh, and and I was mature, so I was like, that's like a pretty rude question to yeah. ask. Um, but have you been asked variations of those questions your whole life? And do you yes. like them? <laughs> um, no, I guess I have a similar reaction to, <laughs> to the one that you have. It just seems, it also just seems to come out of a misunderstanding. And maybe other people haven't been as fortunate as we have been, but yeah. acting for me never was a... Uh, it, it just added something on to my childhood as yeah. opposed to thinking that it was taking, taking me away from yeah. the childhood that I was meant to have. And, totally. and I sort of went between those two worlds. And no, I think we've turned out all right. So I think we, so. we should I just think I've defend out ourselves all right. for I know. as long as possible. Well, that's what ends up happening is you, I feel like I have to defend Militant, my yeah. life and um, defend and then it's like, you know, when you hear somebody like overly defending, you're like, oh, they must be overcompensating mm -hmm. for something. So you're walking this line of like defending yourself, but also not too much because I don't have anything to defend because yeah, I... Yeah, and not criticizing other people who no, and, and, and done acting as a kid. Exactly. Not that there's nothing wrong with either one, I There's guess. nothing yeah. wrong with either one. I just, um, when I look back and I think of the experiences that being an actor has brought me, I just don't know a lot of other people our age who have been to the places that we've been mm -hmm. and met 
all different kinds of people and the friendships. It's just like added so much to my life. And I just, um, it does kind of like hurt me a little bit when people try and somehow turn it into a negative. And I, I, um, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> There's an assumption somehow in asking the question that things are gonna go badly at some point in the future too, which I guess yes. is like the tendency, when you're being asked it as a kid, it's like, yes. so you know, you're 14, you're 15, like you've stayed Nervous? stable for yeah, now. Right, yeah, for now. But like yeah, how are you exactly. gonna manage in the future when yeah. the inevitable happens and you, well, you also go off asked, the rails? Yeah, and, well you also get asked like, how are you not off the rails? And yeah. it's such a, like I don't even, I don't even know how to begin. That's why I always refer to football. Or like you that. do with like yeah. gymnastics, like, oh, I, I did sports. Like, like I, I, I really, tried, I just <laughs> didn't, I tried to do other things. I I'd just love to have played like for Arsenal. I wasn't but good I, at him, you know, like this was, this was the thing. Sorry, you know what I mean? <laughs> Every Sean, cut, just, just you, calm down now, can't please. Can't okay, hey, hey, don't hey, hey, let hey, anyone hey, ever tell you what you can't hey, do to make my own decisions. I want to make my own decisions. I want to make my own, I want help. I guess for me, I feel that Bates Motel was, a, kind of came at the perfect time because at the moment when people were asking those questions the about trans, the, the, the transition, transition time, yeah, yeah, from yeah, yeah. being a kid actor to be an adult. I guess I was 19 when I started that and then it went through to sort of 23, 24. And that kind of, for me, was the moment where the transition happened but without me needing to do much if that's how you just got older, um, which was always my answer when people would say as a kid too, it's like, what are you gonna do next year? It's like, well, I guess I'll look a little bit older and hopefully <laughs> that change will just happen I at some stage. I never knew how to answer, like how do you plan to transition from child to an adult? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I think it will just happen one day, you yeah. know, like, and of course, of course, like there was a certain amount of thought that would go into the roles that you choose during that time because I never wanted to seem like I was trying to grow up too fast, yes. you know? So you tried to kind of do things that were appropriate for the, the age mm -hmm. that you were, or at least I tried to do that. Um, and I also just tried not to think about it too much because I think that would drive you crazy if you're constantly like, mm. being strategic about those choices and like, well, people will finally see me as a 17 year old if I do yeah. this part. It's like, well, that's not the reason you should be making choices and like making work you should do a character just because you love it you know yeah. so and I guess um, it's tied up in a, in a experience everyone has of just in real life as opposed to on screen going from being a kid and the first time that maybe the two of us went away and shot on our own yep. and the first time that you go off to university that was and that my you live transition. alone and that was my transition being being um 18 and 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 away on my mm. on my own to me that was like the most transformative experience and I felt like okay I feel like everything that I do from here on out is a part of the adult chapter yes. yeah and you feel exactly and you feel like oh the change has happened but naturally as opposed to oh I'm gonna try and be this 20 year old now it was like oh I guess these are the stories that I'm interested in and that yeah. I'm gravitating towards and I never think about the age of a character no. I just think about the I sort of always ignore story. it I just ignore <laughs> it you know I would do if it was it, you know it, it didn't even matter like the character that I play in the alias I have no idea how old she is you know like I guess she's my age yeah um it just and how isn't. how has that experience been the alienist I mean first of all with it being the first is it the first tv I mean I know it's a limited series but the first experience of that for a while, certainly. Yes, yeah, 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 it is, it is. And it's been one of the greatest experiences of my life. I really do feel that way, personally and professionally. It was the, the greatest experience on a set that I've had in terms of the closeness of the friendships mm -hmm. that were made. Luke Evans and Daniel Brühl, who I worked the closest with, we became so close, as well as all the cast. And we were all in Budapest, Hungary, and so we were so <laughs> far away from yeah. home, and it forced us to come together, and we got to, bring to life a story that people have been trying to make for so long. And now that there is this limited series format, we were able to have 10 hours to tell, you know, the story yeah. of this book and and um, and delve into that world. And the character that I get to play, I do feel was kind of like another step for me. I think she's a period character. It's set in 1896, but she's 
one of the most like feminist characters yeah. I've ever played in such a time that didn't really support that. And yes. um, that's what I love about the show, especially watching it this year in light of everything that has gone on. I imagine since you've yeah, shot, which totally since. I mean, was it you know? was there any of that on set? Were those conversations starting to happen of the not the Me Too movement necessarily, but a greater awareness of the underlying sickness that was found in so much of there were, but it really wasn't until the show was about to start to air mm -hmm. that I think everyone realized the relevance of particularly my character yeah. Sarah's story and how the way that the conversation ar around women's rights and equality and sexual harassment exploded, it just like, there's a scene in the first episode of the series that is completely the same as yeah. an article that was written in 2018 from a woman's experience, you know? So um, on one hand, you want your story and your series to be, to speak to a, to its audience, to a modern mm -hmm. audience, to be relevant. I guess you just wish that it wasn't for, <laughs> for this that reason, reason yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. So it's kind of, it's been a difficult thing to talk about, but I hope that it's created some sort of positive conversation or shown a, a different generation, like, hey, this actually has been, this way for so long well, and like thing, yeah. what can we do to mm -hmm. finally you to know, break this cycle and not go another years. yeah i'm doing this because i want to sleep soundly again what happens when the next boy is killed i'm not talking about what happens i'm talking about what's possible and is it possible for you to walk away from this because i can't i want to talk about the good doctor because i'm such such a fan oh, well, we of that are show. Fans of each other's shows, I so know, but like I, I think that it's so amazing to watch a, a series and to see characters, and when the season ends and like this is how I felt like you're so, like I'm upset that Sean Murphy's not a real person <laughs> that I can meet. You know, like I, I feel so much for for him mm -hmm. as a. Like he's a person to me that I wish was out in the world, and like my logical brain knows that he isn't. Doesn't but exist. Um, I think when an actor can make that happen for the audience, it's such a special thing. I really think that you have done that and oh, just you. brought him to life in such a hopeful. I mean, I think there's a hopeful, way optimistic like, side to him. Absolutely, with absolutely, and, he's, and yeah, he's he's someone that you can root for, and in a time when there's so much negativity that's so easy to come by. What I loved about him was his refreshing honesty and the way that he can be upbeat um, and cheery and seeing the good in people and reminding us that there is some good in humanity. Yeah. Um, and it was a nice transition from Bates Motel. There was only three days between sort of finishing that wow. and then like reading the script and wow. meeting with David Shaw, our main writer, and starting up on this. And I guess I'd got the sort of killing me killing people side of me, out, out of me, and then it was like nice time to save people and to transition to something else. Um, and I think he's also the most complex character that I've ever got to play. And that was, it was exciting to take on that challenge and the research that was required in terms of the autism side of him, but at the same time, not having him be defined by that and finding ways to to create individual traits that may not have necessarily anything to do with the fact that he's got autism. And to, that's what I loved about the script, the idea that we can root, root for him, be on his side, but not, not solely in terms of the struggles that he undoubtedly faces, but like well, when he so falls in love. Too, and when he, and you yeah. see so much and learning that and that he yeah. can totally change and find ways around problems that work for him. You know, it's yeah. like, it's not about um, his rigidity, which I think, I've, I've played a character that's on the spectrum and I think um, there's so many preconceived notions of what people with autism are like. And yes. in reality, what that community says, if you've met one person with autism, then you've met yes, one exactly. person with autism. So. Um, he shouldn't be held up, but nor should your character as like representative of everyone. And no, that, I think if yeah. someone sees a similarity in Sean that they see in themselves, that's great. But um, he's definitely his own 
thing. And like I said, I wish he was a real person <laughs> that I could meet. The one um, thing that's nice about being on the show is um, is definitely the scrubs. People always say, like, <laughs> is it hard being on a medical show? And I guess there's the, like, jargon and the props and getting around that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you're kind of just going around in pajamas. But Very comfortable. you on The Alienist, <laughs> I feel like in the Budapest heat of the summer, Phew. also was suffering under the weight of... I was. The period costumes. I was. I think I've experienced what it would be like to live in 1896 better than most <laughs> people can imagine, just in terms of the discomfort level. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was, it was really difficult on, like, you know, July 4th weekend in, like, a corset. Like, yeah. in, in Budapest in Europe, it's, like, 100 degrees, like, so hot. Um, but it does really just put you in a different time and what it would have been like to have to wear those clothes. It just changes the way you do everything, the way you move, the way you stand, the way you walk. It's like an immediate sort of, you don't feel like yourself, you know? And um, so it's helpful. It was helpful to me in that regard, but yeah, it was it was really hot. And it like changes your body too. I'm like, oh, really? yeah, my, posture. my organs like with are being moved oh, around. Physically, like yeah, I felt that <laughs> it feels that way. I don't know if that's actually happening, but it feels it feels that way. Um, and how did you deal with the the sort of gruesome nature of what you were shooting? I mean what I love about the show and your performance is that it is so nuanced and that there's so many levels to seeing something that is so sickening and the, not to give anything away, mm -hmm. but the repetitive murders that go on, but every time it causes this different reaction, but that's still subtle and grounded. But, but was it on a personal level a lot to get through, going, getting yourself into that headspace all the time? It would, you know, it would be the first time you would mm -hmm. see like one of the crime scenes and, you know, we're, we're dealing with like the murders of children, so that takes it kind of to an even darker place. Yeah. And um, and for better or for worse, ev the props were so realistic and like so well done that it would be very disconcerting the yeah. first time. But you also know what it's like to be on a set day in and day yeah. out, and eventually, you know, the corpse is being like he heaved over yeah. Steve's shoulder and it like plopped on a table <laughs> so the camera can go there, you uh -huh. know? So it's like you kind of get a little desensitized yeah. to it as the shooting goes on. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I was most, I had the, mo the most visceral reaction to, to actually watching it, you know, um, in the finished product. <laughs>